Hey, hey guys, it's Nicole. Welcome back to Chronicles of a Crafter. So today is Make It Monday, and I am accepting the challenge to make that project that Milena made a few weeks ago. Uh, I believe she called it a pocketed envelope ephemera holder. So I'm going to give you my measurements on how to make the one that I'm going to make, and I'll also give you Milena's measurements on how to make an envelope without a punch board okay so I don't have a punch board to make envelopes I'm using my homemade crafty little um, cardboard thingy that I just replicated from um, a Martha Stewart's envelope uh, maker so I just slide this up into the corner of my existing 12 by 12 punch board um, scoreboard and um, yeah I'm going to make something similar to what Milena made. Now Milena had a kit with a lot of pretty paper in it. I just have scrapbook paper or paper packs so um, they're cardstock weight and mine will be just a little bit different probably a little bit more grungy. Hers was very pretty. She had lots of pretty paper. So basically what we're gonna do to make the size envelope that Milena had which was a four and a half by four and a half envelope you need a seven and a half by seven and a half sheet of paper and that's what this is right here this is just plain cardstock and I'm just showing you how to get it um, without a punch board okay I'm gonna use my little scoring stylus here and we're gonna score at three at three inches all the way around so I'm scoring here at three rotating it a quarter ro uh, quarter rotate and scoring again at three right here whoops rotating it a quarter turn and making sure you line that paper back up in this corner right here because that's that's going to determine where your score mark goes and I'm scoring it again there at three I'm going to rotate it a quarter turn again and I'll just do it from the bottom there we go because my scoreboard has marks here and here and I know that's my three mark this is my nine mark and they have it on the top and the bottom as well so with this paper being small enough I can see that that's my three right there oops on the three okay and if you make a mistake like this you can just flip your card over where is it oh it's right there you can barely tell just flip your card over and rub it out with your bone folder so now we're going to cut away these little triangles right here because a punch board does all of that for you and we're doing this without a punch board so I'm just going to cut away all of these little triangles and feel free to cut like whoops feel free to cut the score um groove also like this little valley that the scoring tool makes to give you your measurements you can cut that away as well okay so all we've done so far is um, got a piece of seven and a half by seven and a half paper lined it up with our um, homemade um, envelope maker and scored all the way around it at three inches I can't get this little section my hand keeps slipping okay all right so here we have this right here so the next step would be to just fold all of your score marks over like so like so and like so okay and now we have a little envelope right here so this envelope measures four and a half by four and a half. All right, so you're you're capable of making Milena's project with these instructions that I've just given you without a punch board. Now we're gonna go ahead and make the one that I wanna make, which happens to be using a six by six size envelopes because I wanted to do one that's a little bit bigger um, and hold a lot more ephemera okay so basically I showed you guys on Saturday how to make a six by six um, envelope 
with um, using 10 by 10 paper. So, all right guys, you're gonna score here at three and seven eighths, which is right about here. You're gonna rotate your paper one quarter turn and then score it at four, making sure that your page is lined up here in the corner. Rotate it one more time, quarter turn, and you're gonna score again at three and seven eighths. Rotate it one last time and you're going to score it here at four. Okay, so now we're going to cut away our little triangles. Check with. So then you just fold in your cut, uh, your score marks. Okay. All right. So now you have a six by six envelope. And I flip it over to this beautiful straw paper um, colored and fold it over. Okay. So you have to decide which is your top and which is your bottom. Oh, your sides basically. And I think that is it right there. So let's just see. Our envelope measures six by oops, by six. Okay. And <clears throat> here's the one that I'm going to be using today. I've already scored off my six, my um, uh, 10 by 10 page. I didn't have pretty double sided paper. So I just took a separate sheet of paper and covered the inside upper section that's going to be seen um, by this envelope when it's when the flap is open okay so here is the second page that I'm going to be using in this project and I'm going to do the same thing just glue down this to this upper section right here and that's all that's going to be seen when the flap is open all right so let, I did make a mark already on here here it is so I just flipped it over, drew a line around the, the uh, top of the flap, making sure that it's all tucked in. There's nothing peeking out right here from the inside of the envelope. And I'm, I drew my um, pencil mark around on this side of the page. Okay, and that's what I'm going to cut out. Whoops. So I'm just using my large, uh, I almost said skillet, <laughs> and uh, I'm using my, my large um, scissors, gosh, it's been a long day guys, um, so I'm just using my large scissors to cut that away, I know it's a weird shape, but it's going to go down inside the envelope and you'll never see it. I just did not have pretty double-sided paper. So that's gonna go there. This will fold up like so, that'll fold up like that. Isn't that cute? Okay, let's do that. Grab my uh, silicone glue mat. I'm just gonna go around the, um, actually I'm gonna do my glue stick first. I'm just going to put glue stick everywhere in here. And I'm going to go around the whole thing with Fabrifix glue just along the edges. But not too close to the edge because we don't really want this oozing out. And because this right here comes down in this corner over here, I'm just going to put a little bit of Fabrifix right over there. Alright, and we're going to pop this down based on the cut marks that we just made. And I just wanna make sure that my inside and outside line up really well. And wherever they don't, feel free to come in and snip it away. Or you can use your punch, because now would be a good time to round your corners. All right, and I'm cutting off any excess paper that may be hanging off the sides. So I have these two six by six envelopes right here. 
and I'm going to seal them up okay I went ahead and rounded my top flap with my large corner rounder so about 10 millimeters and I did the same thing for the bottom flap the two flaps on the inside I did not um, round them at all because they'll never be seen so from here all I really want to do is just put a little bit of glue one on this flap right here and that's going to go over here and I'm just going to hold it for just a second so it stays in place and then you also want to put some glue down here. Oh, let's see you want to put some glue down here and down whoa down here here and here you don't want to get glue on your rounded tip part because that's going to go all the way up to your inside paper and we don't want glue oozing out on that side and I'm just going to use a dry wipe clean up any excess on this project and I'm just going to hold mine up just to make sure that the pages aren't stuck together on the inside because this is now a usable pocket so far and um, we can definitely get a good bit of stuff down in there okay that's looking pretty good all right I'm gonna do the exact same thing that I did on the previous one to this envelope just gonna hold it for a little bit I'm gonna get glued down here halfway up this side down here and halfway up this side again staying away from this punched corner and I'm just gonna hold it in place for a few just to make sure that all the glue stays on the inside of the envelope all right so now we have this and this is going to be my front and my back covers of the envelope flip book okay the next thing you want to work on is your spine so here are some sheets of paper that matches the envelope these are just off cuts and I also have a plain piece of white cardstock. Now the reason I'm using this white cardstock is because I don't think that this um, scrapbook paper is thick enough or sturdy enough to hold um, the, bind the, the ring binders or the book rings. Um, in place. So, all right, so I'm just taking a plain piece of white cardstock. I'm going to put some Fabrifix glue, well, all over it, and I'm adhering it to one side of my pretty scrapbooking paper. And I'll tell you the measurements for this paper that I cut. This, this is just the scrap from cutting the envelope. Um, this measures um, about five and three quarters by one and a half. So let me just double check that for you. And I'm almost positive that's what it measures. So let's see here. The, well, it's five and seven eighths. Five and seven eighths by one and a half. Okay. So I'm going to mix and match my patterns and I'm using uh, Fabrifix to sandwich these two together with a little piece of cardstock in the middle. Okay, so there is that. And wherever there's excess, feel free to just snip it away. Because my, my blade also has its own measurement on my uh, um, guillotine. So you got to take into consideration that there is a fraction of an inch on my guillotine that accounts for the blade. 
So now we have this little guy and I also have to be careful I'm using Fabrifix glue on some uh, gold foil paper so just have to take that into consideration. Be careful because Fabrifix will eat away um, or Fabri-Tac um, or Beacon 3-in-1 or whatever you have that's um, that consistency it will eat away at your gold foil so just be aware. So one of these will go on yep these line up perfectly one of these will go on this envelope and then the other one will go on this envelope as my two um, uh, spines basically and I'm going to ink this in the color aged mahogany doesn't that look so you would think I planned this <laughs> Sometimes I have no clue what I'm doing. So, just trying to find a little dauber that I can use. I'll just use a new one. And I will use my homemade dauber. Check this out, guys. This is just a piece of Velcro on a an empty thread spool with a wine cork stuck in the top for grip and the velcro is on the rough side and you get a brand new dauber boom instant dauber all right this is just something homemade this was before i spent the money to get these nifty guys that are very useful actually but when i was first starting out you had to get creative and this is what i came up with before i ink it I'm going to go around and round the corners on here. Let's just see. Yep. Round these corners. I'm going to use my medium corner rounder. So that's about 7 millimeters. Alright. I think that glue is good and dry in there. So now I will ink it. I mean that just blends so perfectly. Oh goodness. I can't I couldn't plan this any better. I didn't even know this is what the paper that I was gonna do. So yep, that worked out. Okay, so yeah, this one will go over here and I will round these corners as well. My glue may still be a little wet, so might be hard to punch but we'll get it done so I'm just getting rid of all those white edges with some aged mahogany and this one will go on this side so here is the Fine for this envelope. Actually, this one will go on this side. Yeah, that'll go there. And then this one will go here. So let's just go ahead and fold over any creases that we haven't done yet. And wherever your paper breaks, just go in with some ink and no one will be none the wiser so now we have that and this we just need to figure out where we're going to line this up to glue it to each other all right that's the spine for the back and this is the spine for the front and both of these together will make one book so i have just turned my six inch envelope into a seven inch book just by adding a spine that is that measures one and a half inches let me go grab some paper that I want to use in this book and then we can determine um, how big the book is going to be I'll be right back okay guys so I grabbed this sheet of paper and I cut it down to six and three quarters by five and three quarters and these are going to make the pockets that go inside of this book 
So it's just single-sided cardstock. I have a stack of them right over here, ready to go. And I cut them all down to six and three quarters by five and three quarters. So I just need to figure out where I want to place my spine on the envelope so that this page fits nicely in here and all the way to the edge of the spine on this side. So I'm thinking that I want my book to be about six, six and seven eighths, right? Because that'll give me just barely a overhang and it's nice and even top and bottom. So six and seven eighths is going to be the size of the book. We just make a note. Okay, because I also have to do the front cover as well. So I'm <clears throat> just going to line this up to six and seven eighths, making sure that it's nice and even. Okay. So I'm just going to take oh, Fabrifix and I'm just going to add my envelope right down here using my um, my uh, <laughs> my mat as my measuring tool, right? So I'm just lining it up with six and seven eighths. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's right here. It's six and seven eighths, and placing that down there. I'm going to wipe away any excess glue that oozes out. Okay, I'm going to let that sit for a minute. I did put a lot of glue and I want it to grab really well. So I'm going to flip it over and check for any glue seepage. And you don't want to wipe, right? You want to like just really dab because you don't want your, your page to slide. So I'm just really just dabbing any excess glue that may have seeped out. All right. So now we have this little cute guy right here. This is our front cover. And moving right along quickly, here is our, whoops, here's our back cover. I'm going to line this up again at the bottom of my score mat. Can you guys see that at all? I feel like there's a bar in your way. Maybe it's just my eyes. I'm going to line this up again. Six and seven eighths right there. Okay. Getting it as straight as possible. Top and bottom onto this little spine that we made. And down. And before it starts to dry, because we can always, I'm just going to stand these two up together and make sure that they line up nice and evenly. Get rid of any excess glue. Yep, I couldn't have done that any better myself. Okay, perfect. So here I'm just going to grab my little dauber and just ink around the edges wherever like your page may have cracked when you folded it. And the only other thing that I did not do or forgot to do actually was uh, decorate my spine. I really wanted to put a piece of lace on here and wrap it around the entire um, spine of this uh, flip book. However, I, I just didn't do it and it would have only covered half of it if I do it now so anyway long story short we're going with just this inside page actually we'll just do this outside page because this is my this one is my front cover so we'll just do right here with some lace and I'm just going to use Fabrifix not a lot, just a little. I don't want it oozing through the lace. And I'm going to place this right here. And let that dry. And on this back side of the book, 
I'm just going to take the same lace. I'll cut it down to size later. And I'm just going to put a little bit right here, a little bit of glue. And then pop the lace down on top of it. And let that dry. Okay. So that's done. And we're going to work on um, getting our spines punched with our um, uh, book rings. Okay. So I'm just going to remove the excess lace here. Okay. And the excess lace here. And I'm not sure if I want to keep this. No, I don't. I'm just going to remove the excess lace here. Okay. So we need to go and round all of the corners to our pages that are going in this book. We also need to glue them because um, they're going to become little pockets. So here's one page or one um, set of pockets. So here are my stack of pages that are going into this book. And I strategically went through and matched them up with another design all the way through here. Okay, so that no two patterns are the same and okay so there's that I have lots of plain paper in here as well as as well as lots of decorated paper but they all need to be rounded on one corner I'm sorry two corners on one side so I'm just gonna go through each of these and pop in my I believe this is my large corner rounder let's just double check uh, yeah, I want to say, is that the large or the medium? I think that's the medium. Let's just try it again on one of these and see what we get. And then take it over here and see what we got. Yep, that's the medium. See, test paper. It's good to have some on hand. All right. So again, all of these are right side up. I went through and made sure of that some most of them are non-directional but like this has a direction and um, yeah I just went through and made sure that they're all in the direction that I want them to be I'm gonna take two at a time round the corners with the medium which it equals the seven millimeter on your we are memory keepers corner rounder and I'm just gonna double check that against here even though I checked it on some scrap so there's one and I like this this is gonna be my front um, stack right here so that's gonna go there okay and uh, here's my number two Alright, so I'm just going to go through and punch all of these and I'll be right back. Okay, so these are all corner rounded. They're all partnered up with their buddies. The only thing left to do is to um, glue around the edges and then circle punch them. Okay, so I'm going to first, I'm going to decide where my circle punch is going to go. And I'm going to use a much larger circle punch than the one and a quarter. I'm going to use the probably two, maybe I'll use my two and a half inch circle punch. Not that you're going to get a full two and a half inch thumb notch, but it'll be a much wider um, section right there. So to figure out where my thumb notches are going, and I know my book is almost seven inches wide I just lined up my book with my mat almost to the seven so I know that four is a three I'm sorry three 
and a half and then maybe a little bit so about three and three quarters is the mark that I want to circle punch everything so it's almost seven right uh, three and a half would be just even we'll put it at three and a quarter okay so that's about the halfway mark between um, you know between the end the two ends of the book okay so I can't punch all of these at the same time but at least I have this little mark right in here to give me some guidance as to where the circle punch is going to go and I'm going to take them two at a time here we go guys my crazy <laughs> crazy circle punch and um, let's just see what this looks like Whew. okay so I think I'm pretty happy with that and the location so I'm just gonna go through and punch all of these in that same spot and I'll be right back all right guys so those were my last few that I needed to punch through and I have all my limbs I'm not bleeding and I didn't squeeze myself in this <laughs> doozy of a circle punch this time so I'm happy about that I'm just going to place um, some ink just on the edges of this entire stack because not everything is this this color but just to get rid of those white edges I'm just gonna go around and ink it all and then I'll ink as I go if I see any that needs additional ink okay so there's there's that section of this project all completed all right let's just take our cover this is going to go like so take our back cover this is going to go like so and there we have something that looks almost like Molina's all right so now we just need to decide where our um, book rings are going and I'm going to do mine just a little bit differently um, and uh, I'm going to use a book ring obviously which is which are these I went to my little spray painting corner over there and I spray painted my book rings gold it's a metallic gold so it kind of look bron looks bronzy and then I went and grabbed four little buttons right here and I'm also going to add um, reinforcements so these are my little reinforcement circles there's one missing there we go these are my reinforcement circles I'm gonna place these on the inside so there's gonna be two on the front oops sorry these are gonna be two on the front right there and right there and then there will be two on the back cover okay on the front of this page the cover page I'm going to use buttons so I'm going to place a little button right there and a little button right there and then I'm going to run my um, book ring through it and but on the inside there will be reinforcement paper like the way Milena did hers my buttons happen to have very large holes so I was able to get a binder ring to go straight through it with no problem see that so I'm thinking that's even better than a uh, paper reinforcement I'm just gonna glue these buttons down after I mark where the binder rings are gonna go so I just need to line up my buttons so that they are facing in the right direction and I will mark on here which may be a little difficult trying to mark it with um, with my decorated lace 
so that's going to be interesting but uh, yeah I just want to get my buttons somewhere centrally on the book I think Malena did an inch and a half down and then a, um, the binder ring then an inch and a half from the from the top and a binder ring so or not a binder ring but a book ring um, so yeah I'm just going to line mine up so that I can huh yeah, I'm just gonna <laughs> I'm just going to place mine down where I think it should go. So I know like probably two and four are or two and four and a half are the halfway marks. Let's see, one and three quarter one and three quarters and four and a half should be my halfway marks. I'm gonna hold this in place and going to mark here with my pencil. Actually, I'm going to mark right on top of that lace with a pen. Straight through the buttonhole that I want the binder ring to go through. So I can see that. That looks good. And here, one and three quarters. Line up that button. Okay. So what I'll do is grab my big chompy crocodile, get my pages all lined up, and I'm just going to go through all of this just like that. And um, prior to that, I'm going to glue all of these pages together because I have not done that yet. So I'm going to go ahead and glue all of these together to make a pocket like this. And I'm going to get the tiniest bead of glue on here pos as possible. And I'm going to try to get it as close to the edge as possible. Um, because I know that my button is going to go in further in. So here's my button mark, right? I'm putting my glue on the edge of this paper right there. This way when I punch for my button, the glue won't impede that hole. I'm just going to go around each one of these with the tiniest bead of glue. Okay, Fabrific, I mean uh, Art Glitter is having an issue today. Let me go clean my Art Glitter and I'll be right back. Alright guys, I'm gluing down the last page in this book. And I had to revert to uh, Fabrifix because my art glitter just did not want to play. I believe I have to take the entire cap apart, wash out all of that glue, and then I think I'm going to go back to using um, my little bottle dispensers, you know, um, and just separate it out from that big bottle because I can't have that big bottle clogged up when I'm ready to craft. It's just unproductive. So I'm gluing down the last couple of um, the last two pages together to make the final pocket and again I just used a Fabrifix so let me find my Fabrifix uh, pin to go back in here okay and there we have that just straightening it up and I just went around and inked as I glued it okay so any sections that you want inked this would be the time to do it because once you put the paper into the book rings you won't be able to ink these sections as well so now is when you want to ink okay so there's that just lining it up making sure that it's perfectly straight okay and even though the majority of well not not the majority just a few pages didn't coordinate or didn't match with the aged mahogany um, the majority of them did so here I'll just give you a quick little peekaboo of what we got going on as far as our pockets are concerned <clears throat> These are just all different colored um, paper pack um, pages. So the majority of them did match this aged mahogany. So I like that. 
and here is our cover and here is our back cover you just want to make sure that your corners are rounded on the same side if your corners are straight your book is upside down or there's something else going on okay so there's that I'm gonna pop everything down to the bottom here okay all the way down to this edge everything needs to be lined up nice and neat and I'm gonna take my crocodile this is the big boy at one uh, the one eighth um, hole punch and I'm going to try to get all of these in so on the one eighth setting I'm going to risk it all. Oh, God, help me. Come on, guys. <laughs> what do you think? Can I get this all in there? I'm just lining it up with the hole that I made. I mean, the little pencil or pen mark that I made. Okay, I'm just going for it. Wow. I didn't think it was going to do it, but it did. It went straight through. I'm going to put my... my binder ring in there just to or my book ring just to hold it in place while I do the other side I don't need that shifting at all okay I'm gonna slide my book back in there and line everything up with that little pin marker that I made okay sorry for the noise but it worked Where's my little, okay, here we go. So this is going to go right through here. So there's that for now. I still have to figure out what we're gonna do to decorate this um, front flap, but this is what it'll look like when everything is all said and done. So I'm going to take those binder rings back out and I'm going to glue down my button and I'm going to do it one at a time to make sure that everything stays lined up. Let me just grab a, a little bind, a little craft clip here. That should hold it actually. Yeah, I can take both binder rings out. That is definitely holding it in place. So yeah, I just spray painted these gold just so that they can match for this project. And I'm going to take my button and just line it up with the hole that we made right there because that's where I want it to go. And I'm going to add, and this is just, so, okay, so I went to Joanne's and I found this pack of buttons. These are just buttons that were on clearance, okay? There's nothing special about these buttons. They were $1.99 for all of these, and they were on clearance. So I believe the original price was somewhere around seven or eight dollars, so I'm glad I found it at the price point that I did, because I can't imagine spending eight bucks on, I don't know, what is that? 30 buttons maybe okay I'm just gonna line this back up with my hole that I made and I want my uh, button to be on the square okay so I want two buttons in the back two buttons in the front so it's square not on an angle I'm gonna do the same thing with this one Okay, and here we go. Two buttons in the front, two buttons in the back, and they're all on the circle, the hole that we made. Okay, so there's that. I'm going to flip it over and do the same thing with these other two buttons. And if you can see straight through it, you're doing really good so far. <laughs> And one more time. 
I want to get a good bit of fabric fix on there and here we go two in the front two in the back oh yeah I'm loving that that looks so good I mean that looks so good <laughs> and that's gonna close up like that I'm definitely gonna have to let this dry because I really really like how this is coming out it's looking really cute I love it oh yeah that's gonna look fantastic okay so to get our inside reinforcements again this is just cardstock um, with an image on it um, just like that so I'm just going to um, wait until this dries for one because I need to take the binder rings back out line these up on the inside of the front cover and the back cover and then punch a hole through it lined up with where these binder rings are currently sitting so I'm gonna wait on that I'm gonna let this dry for just a few all right guys so we are making this happen so here is my finished front cover I've added my buttons to it right here and here and my reinforcements on the back I just need to use my awl um, where's my awl I have an awl somewhere on my desk oh it's holding my pages together right here okay so I'm just gonna use the awl and finish the the hole through on the back side of the reinforcement and to this side okay and then I'm going to go in with my little file this file I've used in dozens of jewelry making processes but um, it's a very fine file and I'm just going to um, run it through the hole the other way so that the paper that frayed on its way out is now on its way back in to the center of the uh, reinforcement and that gives you a much cleaner look on the outside you see the difference like this one I went through this side with the all the bottom and this one I went through the bottom but I went back in with the file and that's what comes off of the, the uh, paper once you do that so I'm just going to punch it back through, run my file through there just to clean up the outside of the reinforcement. Okay, so that looks pretty good so far. Okay, uh, let's see. Did I do this side yet? I did. I just need to file it. Okay. So that gives us a nice clean open hole so that the uh, book rings can go through it. I also went in with um, some liquid um, liquid pearls on each of the buttonholes that were open so not the actual hole that the book ring is going to go through but just all these other extra the other three holes on there I just went in with some copper pearl liquid pearl and um, yeah and I let it dry so that it's you know not going to be a problem today <sighs> all right so here we go here are my pocketed pages that's going to go inside of this journal i'm going to flip this I part something can you say it again <laughs> you missed it because i weren't talking to you thanks for letting me know oh my goodness oh my goodness i question the reason <laughs> That she's in here anyway here are my pocketed pages I started working on um, the outside pockets so this one's gonna probably go right here in fact why probably let's just do it I'm going to uh, add some glue right on the outside edges and this is my um, art glitter glue which I cleaned off the tip and now it's flowing nicely so I had to really like take the whole precision tip apart and get it all cleaned up in there and now it's playing again it's playing fair so I just have to remember to put the pin back in between uses 
and this should glue down right here. So I pre-inked the corners of this just so you don't have to watch me ink. But yeah, this fits really good right here. And this was just a 12 by 12 sheet of paper that I cut into uh, six by six. So here's the remaining three pieces from it. Okay, so this one is the opposite to this right here. So I'm gonna place that on this opposite inside cover right here. Again, art glitter just on two sides. We're making corner tucks. Okay, so I'm just gluing down two sides. And I just cut this on a diagonal just so that it'll fit into the corner um, of the front cover and the first page. So that's gonna go like right there. Fits perfectly on this paper. All right, so the next thing I wanna do is look at my next page. So I have this one and this one. Again, here is the page that this came from. I just tore it, guys. <laughs> I just ripped it and uh, it came out great. So here I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue on this lower section, on this bottom section. I can't make a straight line to save my life right now with glue. And on this side section. So now we have a three-sided pocket. Okay. And again, I just pre-inked it with aged mahogany. I'm going to put this down right here in this corner. And right there. Okay. just going to wipe away any excess glue that may have oozed out. It won't be a lot because I did a very, very thin line of uh, glue. And I'll just ink this bottom section of the page. Okay, so yeah, there's that. Cute, right? What are we going to do over here? I'm not sure yet. Um, I do have some more six by six pages. Oh, I can do something like that. I have lots of six by six papers that were 12 by 12. I just cut it into fours and we have lots to play with. I can do something with that because I believe I have a page in here with that one. Um, I can do something with this. All right. So let's do that. Let's do something with this one. <coughs> And I probably won't show you guys all of the pockets that I make, just for time's sake. I mean, I'm already running into a, um, you know, well over an hour. So let's just see. I will put a pocket here on this page. And I'm just, like I said, just tearing it into the shape that I want it to go in. And this might not even be the final shape. I'm just checking as I go. Okay, so here's something that looks interesting, and that will go right here, not covering up the hole, so I'll bring it over to the edge of the paper. And yes, it looks backwards, so what I'll do is I will bring it down this way so that this is my lower section of this pocket. Yeah, much better. I can even bring it down some more, like all the way down. Or I can just tear this side off. Okay, so let's see. I'm just tearing paper, that's all this is. <laughs> that's all we're really doing here, is just playing with paper and glue. And if you tear your paper, like, you know, one way this way, one way that way, all the way until you get to the bottom, you'll get a really nice um, finished edge on there. And um, all that's left to do is ink it at that point. So I'm just using my fingernails to pull away the excess. And I think this shape will work out really nicely. So let's just see. Yep. 
Yeah, that looks good. I'm also going to take some of my... Um, what is this, guys? My ledger paper that I made. And I'm just going to place this like right on here. And just grab some of this interesting stuff. And make a matte, a matted cover for it. So, to do that, I'm just going to draw like a little line all the way down the the um, ledger paper and then I'm just going to tear it right along that line and then once we get got that torn I can decide like how much of it is going to go onto the pocket So let's just take a look. So here's our pocket. Our torn line almost matches up perfectly. I can see that I need to tear some of this away. So that'll go like right there. And then this can become either a double pocket, like multi pocketed, or one single pocket just in the back here. So I'll play around with that and see if this paper is strong enough or if I need to back it up with maybe some cardstock. That would also help to make it a reinforced um, double pocket. So I'm just going to ink around the edges here just for co um, just for consistency, right? Just want it to be uh, accurate accurately blended so that'll go there and this can go on top of it so maybe I will do a double pocket I will add um, some uh, reinforced this right here so it doesn't tear when you tuck things in I will add uh, just a little bit of cardstock on the back here all right so let me go do that and I will try to get some more pockets done and then we can wrap this whole thing up all right, I'll be right back. Well, I'm sure the question is going to come up. Um, how did I create all of these pockets on here? So I'm going to show you guys how I'm making one of these pockets that's going to go on uh, this section of the booklet. So I'm just taking a couple of scraps that I tore and I'm going to glue these two down. Um, I'll probably glue this one across the top. Actually, uh, let's see. I will glue this one along this side right here. Then I'm going to glue this this one here along this side to go on here. And I'm going to put a thumb notch in the top of all of them once I glue it. So let's just let's just see what happens, okay? So what I've done was I've taken a separate sheet of this pattern and I'm lining it up with the backing of this pocket. So that's going to go right about here on an angle well, the angled pattern, so these lines all line up. So it's going to go about there, right? And this will become the basis of the, the pocket cover, if that makes any sense. I'm so sorry, guys. Anyway, <laughs> so this is going to go there. This is going to go back here on an overhang to the actual pocket. So it's going to fall right about there. Okay, and then I'm going to take the entire thing and punch a thumb notch in it, glue this down so that I have a couple of upper tuck spots. So this will tuck up like that and this will tuck up like that. Again, Milena had this really pretty paper pack or um, kit let's just say and I don't so I'm gonna have to improvise a lot of my designs um, for these pockets so yeah I mean I know she tore a lot of her paper but again my paper is just um, just various things that I pulled out of my stash and this is what we're going with for now so yeah this is going to glue down on there this will glue down on here and I'm just using the 
mix and match pages that are in this this booklet that I'm making so if you're probably wondering like what is that blue stripe doing there when you flip this over it's all gonna come together and you're gonna be like oh that's what the blue stripe is at least that's how I looked at it <laughs> I mean, when I when I picked out the page, I was like, I wonder if they're going to get this. So that's why I decided, like, let me just come on here so you can see what my thought pattern is for creating these pockets the way that I'm doing it. So, again, this would be the solid backing of a pocket. This will be a little corner tuck upwards. This will be the second layer of that corner tuck, and the whole thing will become a pocket, right? So... Let's just do that really quickly. I went ahead and inked my edges um, just because I wasn't sure um, which section is going to become the pocket. But I think if I glue this top one down on here and I'm going to give my art glitter a chance to play. All right, so I'm just gluing this down. on that side and on this side okay so that's gonna go there I left a little gap in there I'm not really sure where the thumb notch is gonna go but I left a little gap so that I don't uh, waste glue and um, and uh, that section gets punched away completely you know so that's gonna go right on top of there just like that nice and even lined up with the edges okay so far we automatically have a tuck okay so that's that's a great space to tuck something um, so there's that one this one's going to glue down on here and here is the tricky part so I still have to keep this lined up with the backing I don't have to but I think for aesthetic purposes I will I'm going to keep it lined up with the backing place this one on top of it like so get this nice and squared lined up right there and this needs to come up slightly all right so I just barely made it down here at the bottom here I'll just zoom you in just a little bit I got it all lined up I just I mean barely made it to the bottom here so if I shifted everything over everything will be nice and square and this will become the basis for my second tuck spot so <laughs> that'll be a nice little tuck spot underneath there and then the whole thing this backing will become a pocket all right so I'm just gonna go ahead and play with this a little bit try to get it all squared up and I'll be right back so that worked out really well. So let me just show you exactly what I've got going on. I went ahead and cut my thumb notch in with my two and a half inch circle punch. And here's a huge pocket back here. A little tuck spot up underneath here. Another little tuck spot right up underneath here. And the whole thing is uh, backed onto this. So this is our um, pocket backing. So yes, again, this is a pocket that goes all the way down to here and I matched this with that. Did I back you guys up yet? No, I didn't. <laughs> so again, here's my pocket tuck, my little tuck spot up here, here, and the huge pocket in the backing. All right, so that's what this pocket's gonna look like. And um, I just need to do one for this side right here. So let's just see. Here's my thought process, right? So I just find paper that is coordinating with the rest of the paper in here. So once you flip over, you know, a few pages, you may see a repeat pattern. So that's really how I think about it. And um, um, let's see. So I can, I can, uh, yeah. And this also coordinates well with this. And that's why I went with the aged mahogany because that is such a beautiful color. And it matches a lot of the other pages in here so this is working out very nicely so I did not bring all my my pockets to this corner here I kind of stopped them you know before I got to the ring the whole the ring holes or yeah the ring holes um, because I mean you won't really be able to use it anyway because of the ring holes so I mean I can just 
I don't know, I can mat this on here and then just cut that out. And this can be, um, let's see, what can I turn this into? I like this paper so much. Single sided paper, really cute. I can just do, repeat what I've done here on this side. So I can take this, it's not quite six by six, it's probably like five and, no, oh, it's six by five and a quarter. So I can cut this on an angle and repeat that back here. So let's just see what that looks like. Um, I just use my giant shears that has glue on it now. I don't know how that happened. And I've been doing all kinds of stuff today, guys. Like, I went ahead and uh, took a break. I went and did some tie-dye. <laughs> so my fingers are, um, they're inked and they're gross <laughs> because I've been playing with tie-dye and, um, you know, just a bunch of different projects. So let's just see. I uh, will place this in this corner here and freehand cut it on an angle. Alright, so that so far was simple. I could just leave it just like that, but that's not me, right? So, what I'm going to probably do is grab some lace and uh, I will tear this edge put some lace on top of it. Here is some crochet lace. I don't even need to tear the edge if I put lace right there, I just realized. So yeah, I can easily do that and this will be a corner tuck. So let's just do that. All right, um, again, art glitter. I'm keeping this, I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible, but you will see like some of my pages are super intricate kind of like the previous demonstration that I showed you like you know looking at it you'll be like okay so she inked a few strips of paper and glued them together but at the same time it's like those pages that I inked are all usable tuck spaces so that really um, is a little welcome surprise when you are um, trying to create something from nothing you know and I cannot stress enough that Milena had the best looking paper kit I've seen in a while. Like, you know, I wish I had some of that paper, but, um, you know, we have to do, we have to make do with what we've got. And this is crochet lace. I am going to put it all the way from one corner to the other. And you won't even know that my pocket ended here and here, right? So I'll just lace it all the way from there to there just barely on the edge of the pocket and more so yeah yep that's what I'm going to do decision has been made I'm using fabric fix because it is a clear silicone glue and it glues fabric to fabric paper to paper and fabric to paper so we are doing fabric to paper and don't want to close up the pocket even though my lace is going to go edge to edge of the page I still don't want to close up that pocket so got to keep the lace on the pocket side of the paper and try not to get your fabric fix glue to ooze down in there and what you can do to avoid that is just tuck something in you know just to keep that lace lifted so that it does not um, yeah, I'll just move my other pages out of the way just so that it does not stick to the backing. And down here where the lace comes all the way down to the edge, I can secure it down here. Okay, so that's gonna go right to the edge of the page right there. And I can secure it up here because I mean, really, you're not going to get something all the way into this very corner considering there's already glue along this edge right here so I think that's good I can take that away and I can cut away the excess so let's just do that Whoa. okay all right, that's 
so cute. Improvising, right guys? That's all we're doing here. So let me just go ahead and try to finish up some more of these pages. I'll come back when it's time to assemble everything and show you what I've created. I'll be right back. Okay guys, it's finishing up time. I've pretty much gotten everything done that I need to do for this project and I'm going to assemble it and then we'll flip through it. Okay, so first let's finish up our cover. So I've taken my favorite piece of paper. It was single-sided um, cardstock. This was my favorite piece out of the entire project. So I'm going to use this for my cover. I'm going to tuck this into this front cover pocket like so. Right? And I'm just going to trace around the edges of the envelope to get a very precise uh, measurement for what's going to go on the outside cover. So then I'll just take it to my scissors and cut directly on that pencil mark because it's perfectly lined up with what I want for this inside. Um, the outside, sorry, the outside pocket of the envelope. And you'll see that this lines up perfectly right here on the front cover of the pocket. So what I want to also do is tuck some of this underneath the edge of the button if it'll fit right there. Yep. So right underneath there and right underneath there will be some of the, the page will be tucked underneath the button. Which gives me a little bit of matte on this edge right here and a little bit of mat on that edge right there okay so let's just double check all of our placement yep so I'm just gonna glue this down just as is I'm gonna use Fabrifix because it's here and ready to go let's just see where we go from here. So the top flap, this section here, um, I cut a page from, did I cut it? What did I do with it? Oh no, I was so prepared to show you guys. Here it is. Okay, so here is the other page. <laughs> I was trying to clean up while, um, you know, putting things away while still filming. So anyway, here is my front flap. What I want to do with this flap is put a little handle on it. So I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to take this little tiny itty bitty little handle. It looks like that. All right. And if I remember, I'll put a link for this down in the description box below. I just took it to my lid, um, decorated lid, or you know, this is what I'm calling my lid. And I put a couple pencil marks on there. And then I'm going to take my very tiny, the tiniest of, um, I think this is a 1 8 hole punch. I don't use it very often, but today is its lucky day. It made a very tiny hole for me right there on either side for where I have placed my pencil marks. And then I'm going to line this up just like so. And I'm going to use some brads to... Um, and these are just a little bit too big, but the screws were a little bit too small. And oh, well, my smaller brads were just a little bit too small and the screws would not work in this project at all. So I had to go with my, it's a little bit oversized brad, but it doesn't look too bad, right? It just looks like a fat button right there. So I'm going to stick the other side in just like that. Okay, and I put a little charm on there. One side says love, the other side is a puffed heart. So I just put a little charm on there. It's really cute. And I'm holding my brads in place. Okay, and I'm just gonna spread the uh, little prongs on the back there. I'm gonna get it really tight onto the page. Okay, so that's going to go just like that. And here is my front cover, um, the flap covering. Okay, 
I want to position those brads right in position where I want them to stay forever and ever and it's centered then I'm going to take fabric fix glue and place it all over this front cover here including those brads especially those brads and fabric fix will pretty much keep all of this intact forever and ever <laughs> I hope <laughs> all right and I'm gonna take my lid I'm just gonna line up this curve because that's the important section for me anyway whatever happens after that is totally by grace and will okay so there is that and I think the weight of the um, the little handle plus the brads and the charm will keep this front page down you know once the glue is all dry so I'm gonna set this aside just for a couple of minutes because I'm gonna need it in just about maybe two to three minutes so I'm hoping that it all stays glued down in place and when you flip it over okay if everything else is straight and you flip it over and you have a little bit of page left over right there just go in with the scissors and cut that off afterwards but because I'm using fabric fix glue and it will contrast and shrink a little bit as it's drying I'm gonna leave every bit of paper right where it's at for now okay so I'm just using a couple of clips to hold it down and any glue that oozes out which isn't much at all just wipe it away all right so here's the rest of my little booklet I'm gonna flip this side over to here and I'm gonna put a couple of little corner corner buttons these little fur leaves that look, look looks like this I'm just gonna pop them right into the corner right there and again wherever your page cracked and um, you know from the scoring just put a little bit of glue on it I'll hold it there for a second and if it really matters that much to you you can ink it afterwards but for purposes of this I'm just going to put my fur leaf corner in and again, I'm using Fabri Fix, hoping that it doesn't eat away at the paint that's on this button because it's just made to look gold. It's not actually gold. And it's not metal at all, it's plastic. <laughs> so I see my glue changing colors already. I hope I can get this down before the whole thing deteriorates in my hand. I'm just gonna pop this right here in this corner as like a little corner page or page corner or book corner or whatever they call it um, I'm do the same thing down here at the bottom so here's my other little button and I'm running out of fabric fix in this little bottle I'm gonna have to do a refill matter of fact I'll just flip this one over and get it ready to go because this one's almost finished I like using these little tubes. They're pretty handy. They, um, you don't waste a lot of glue that way, you know? At least I don't that way. I keep as much glue in here for as long as I can and then redo refills and it works out really well. So I like using these little tubes like this and these that have the precision tips. You know, that's some tacky glue. This is some fabric fix, I mean, um, art glitter in here. And uh, yeah, this is my little tube of fabric fix. But okay, so anyway, that's all done. <clears throat> now I have my little gold uh, book rings. Okay, so what I need to do is line my pages up so that the book rings will go directly through the holes that are pre-made in here. And if you can see straight through to the front of your book, if you're looking at it from the back and you can see straight through that hole from 
you know from the back to the front you've done good <laughs> seriously you've done great uh, attach my front cover here which is in drying mode right like so okay so there's that one and we're going to do the same thing for the bottom and here is my cover all right so guys let's just take a look at what we've got i think i decorated some of the pages in here i'm not really sure if i did all of them you know any of them but um all right so here is our cover our little front flat pocket and you can tuck all kinds of stuff in here so there's a couple of little pieces of ephemera. These are really deep pockets, okay? I made a six by six envelope. Remember, Milena did a four by four envelope. So this is the difference in size. It's two inches bigger that way, two inches bigger this way. So that's just, you know, the way I really wanted to do mine. No fret at all from if you want to do yours four by four and a half by four and a half or um, six by six it's up to you completely so I'm just grabbing some of all of this ephemera that goes into um, into the pockets of the book and we can start tucking some things in so here's my front cover there's my little handle with my puffy heart charm okay and we're gonna flip this over and here is my first Page. let's close the inks I think if I find anything that needs inking I'll do it later so yeah Milena call these creepy people I call them fascinating <laughs> I know Tim Holtz has some really creepy folks but here are just some pockets that I have here and some more pockets that I have here okay so you can tuck these in as deep as you like. I just put two triangular pockets with matching paper, just tore the paper on an angle and then ripped the edges and inked it. So that's how I came up with this page right here. Okay. This next page over here are just some more torn edge paper to match some of the other sheets inside of there. And I put, um, did I put a double? Yes, I put a double pocket on here. So we have a big pocket in the back here. It's just a tuck, right? So it's open on the sides. Got this big guy back here. Hello, Dolce. There's my little Dolce. And then we have this pocket right up here in the front. It's just a tuck. So it's smaller. I believe it's just a tuck. I've done so much in this book already, I don't remember. So anyway, yep, it's just a shorter pocket. It doesn't go all the way down to the bottom, but the back pocket does. So here I can put tons of little tiny tickets right in the front here. Okay, and that looks so cute. I love that. That yellow really gave it a pop of color. Here is a belly band that I made out of um, some cardstock with some burlap lace or burlap ribbon with some lace on top of it. Then I glued on some more um, paper daisies to match these daisies back here and again whoops she's upside down lots of tuck spaces for all kinds of stuff right so that'll go there and not to mention that you guys we have a huge pocket in the back of each one of these pages so here is a if i can find the opening here is a pocket you remember this when we glued these two pages together so you got a giant pocket back there I don't know if I have anything big enough to go in there at least not readily available on my desk let's see here's a very large po postcard okay so I'm gonna turn it sideways just so you can see how much space we got this postcard fits on its side into this pocket right here and it's super deep I don't want to tuck anything in that I'll lose but yeah definitely this postcard will fit down in here just like this okay so we have this really deep pocket back here on each page so here is a 
giant uh, tag. <laughs> it's just some cardstock tag, um, you know, writing space mostly. So this can also fit down inside of here like this. So we have lots of pockets, lots of tuck spaces. All right, so there's my belly band and my back pocket as well. This page I decided to leave empty so that if you wanted to, you can then glue your own picture down on there and it frames it up really nicely. And then I took some coordinating paper and glued it over here for a nice torn pocket. All right, so there's that. And let's see what else we've got. Oh, one of my favorite pages. I took this one to my um, sewing machine and made this belly band. Is it a double belly band? It's all questionable. Like I, I did this so long ago, I don't remember. Single belly band, right? So tuck that interesting couple back here. So the belly band goes from here to here. I stitched across it with a zigzag stitch. And the um and I put a piece of cardstock on top of it from this matching paper. But you can still tuck things right in there. Okay, so that works as well. Here's another page again running out of ideas. So I just used some plain cardstock to match this paper and made myself a double pocket. So I would put her in the front and this pretty postcard right back here. Okay. So going on to the next page, another one of these angled pockets. I think I showed you guys how I made this with the um, crocheted lace. And I think I'll just tuck this little cutie right in here all by herself with maybe a ticket. And then there's this pocket. So this pocket is very interesting. I loved making it. It has a tuck up this way. It has a big pocket in the back here. And it has another tuck underneath here. So there's two upside down tucks going towards the, um, the, book, the book rings and a big pocket in the back. And don't forget, we have a huge pocket still back here. All right, so there's that. Uh, this page was um, fun to do as well. I just took some of that um, ledger paper that I made, right? That's that. Tucked it in back there. And this is a journal entry of sorts from an old journal. So I just tucked it right here in the front here. Isn't that cute? So cute, so simple. This page is a little bit whimsical. This was a uh, paper pack page. Um, it was a full, like a wreath. <laughs> it was a full decorated page all the way around and this wood grain here in the middle. So I took it apart, cut it up into different shapes, cut around the edges. I did a lot of things to this. This is not a pocket, only this back here is a pocket. So, but then we still have this big pocket back here all right so there's that this page I left blank again for the same purposes of perhaps you want to either enjoy this image or place your own photo on there okay so I left that blank this pocket's really cute and interesting interactive this is a little flap right here that you can definitely just tuck something into all right I scored my corner of my page at the, let's say a quarter of an inch and created a little spine for it but then you can tuck whatever you like back there and leave it there like so or you can use this inner pocket that's like a little peekaboo in here there's a pocket just like that okay so there's that I don't think oh double pocket I surprised myself sometimes <laughs> I forgot I mean I did this uh, probably it took me quite some time to get this done so yeah I have a double pocket here and here all right and here we have a pocket made out of our mercantile paper so I made this pocket directly out of this page that we created and it's not a double pocket guys I don't believe I did that I think this is just glued directly onto here I just probably didn't do it all the way to the top 
so there's that. Usually you can tell when it's a double pocket when I've inked all the layers in between. This is another one of my favorite pages. It is a deep pocket here and a deep pocket here all the way across and then a little belly band up here in the front. Okay. And finally, we have this pocket. So again, running out of ideas. I just took the page that I made the circles with for reinforcements and glued it onto here. And now we have this very interesting pocket, I think. If you tuck something in there, look at that. Instant picture frame. Right? I mean, right? <laughs> So surprise, surprise, I just decided to reuse that as, um, you know, as that. So yeah, these are all just little old pieces of ephemera, again, that I pulled out of a paper pack. But you can pretty much do whatever you like in here. And on the inside here, I just took some of that same paper that I made this, um, the whole reinforcements with and lined the inside of here to create my back cover. I hope that you guys um, approve, okay? Because this was a challenge that I received from a subscriber and she wanted me to do something that Malena did and she just wanted to see my take on it. So Malena did say if you keep your little binder, um, your little book rings, where the the wing the closure part is to the back it will open and close a lot it'll slide a lot easier so that's what i'm going to attempt to do right now all right guys i hope you guys have a super crafty day i hope i passed the challenge stay naturally curious guys and check out all of my links down below don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like this video if you found it interesting i will talk to you in the next one. Have a good day, guys. Bye.